Welcome to Electrical Circuit Analysis. Throughout this lecture, I'd like to request you to pause the video whenever you need it and keep pen and paper with you so that we can solve problems to consolidate our understanding. Today we're going to talk about Norton's theorem. So, what Norton's theorem allows us to do is that it reduces a large fixed portion of a circuit into only two elements, an independent current source and a resistor in parallel with that independent current source. So this current source is called the Norton current IN and this resistance is called the Norton resistance RN. Now this sounds all similar to Thevenin and equivalent theorem. Now if you haven't checked out my Thevenin and equivalent lecture, uh, please uh, check it out as well. So Thevenin equivalent, what basically it does is that it replaces a large portion of the circuit with a voltage source with a resistor in series. The Norton, Norton's theorem does exactly the same thing, except for the fact that here we don't have a voltage source, here we have an independent current source, and in parallel with the, uh, with the resistor. So Nor Norton's theorem basically states that a linear two-term null circuit can be replaced by an equivalent circuit consisting of a current source IN in parallel with the resistor RN where IN I is computed by computing the short circuit current through the terminal RN and RN, the Norton resistance is the equivalent resistance at the terminal when we turn off all the independent sources so the Norton resistance here is exactly the same as the Thevenin resistance And in order to compute the Norton current, what we do is that we just short circuit this terminal A and B, and then we measure what current is flowing through the short circuit. That's it, and that is our Norton current. As you might have already guessed, the Thevenin and Norton equivalent circuits are related by simple source transformation. So if you have to determine the Thevenin and Norton equivalent both, what you can do is that you can determine one and take a source transformation to obtain the other. So here I'm going to talk about how we compute the Norton resistance. Again, the Norton resistance is exactly equal to the Thevenin resistance. And in order to compute the Norton current, what we do is that we do a short circuit here and we just determine the short circuit current and that is our Norton current. So if this linear two terminal circuit has a Thevenin voltage VTH and Thevenin resistance RTH, then Norton resistance RN is equal to RTH and Norton current IN is equal to VTH by RTH, basically uh, taking the source transformation of the voltage source. So for this reason, source transformation is often called Thevenin-Norton transformation. Okay, now we're going to solve this problem. So please pause this video and try to solve the problem yourself and then we'll match your answers. So please pause the video. So hopefully you've been able to do this. This is very much similar to uh, Thevenin resistance, the Thevenin equivalent circuit. What we did in Thevenin is that we just determined this open circuit voltage VAB and that was our Thevenin voltage. But what we do here is that we do a short circuit between the terminals A and B and th this 5 ohm resistor becomes parallel to a short circuit. That's why we can just eliminate this resistance. And the current that flows through this uh, short circuit is our Norton current. To determine the current you can use nodal enough estimation analysis, source transformation, superposition theorem, whatever you like and the Norton current is 1 ampere. And to determine the Thevenin resistance, we we'll look into the circuit and we see that there is no uh, dependent sources. So to determine the Norton resistance, what we need to do is that we need to short replace all the voltage sources with the short circuit and replace all the current sources with an open circuit. If we do that, we have 8 ohm, 4 ohm, and 8 ohm in series. 
if we combine them we get 20 and 20 and 5 becomes parallel that's why we end up with Thevenin or Norton resistance 4 ohm so as you can see that the Norton resistance the determination of Norton resistance is exactly the same as the determination of Thevenin resistance the only difference between Thevenin and Norton is that for Thevenin we determine the open circuit voltage VAB for Norton we determine the short circuit current IAB or I short circuit so we do a short circuit here and determine the current alternatively what you can do is that we can determine the Thevenin equivalent of the circuit and do a source transformation and you will see that it will end up with the same circuit so here's another problem please pause this video and try to solve this problem and then we'll match our answers so please pause this video so hopefully you've been able to solve this again we just to determine the Norton current we short circuit this terminal the 6 ohm resi resistance gets cancelled out because it's in parallel with the short circuit so we can just eliminate that we can just remove the 6 ohm resistor and then we determine the current using source transformation nodal analysis, tension analysis, whatever you're comfortable with and we end up with 4.5 ampere Norton current and to determine the Norton resistance, we replace this voltage source with a short circuit and we open circuit this current source. We see that 3 ohm and 3 ohm in series, that, that makes it 6 ohm, and that 6 ohm and this 6 ohm resistor will be in parallel. So we, the eventual Norton resistance or equivalent resistance or Thevenin resistance is 3 ohm. So here's another problem. So please pause this video and try to solve this problem, and then we'll measure your answers. So please pause. So hopefully you've been able to solve this. Again, we do a short circuit here, and this current that is flowing through the short circuit is equal to 10 ampere because this resistor resistance is cancelled, and the voltage across short circuit is zero, which means Vx equals to zero, which means two Vx is equal to zero as well, which means this is also a short circuit. So basically the 6 ohm resistor is in parallel with the short circuit and this entire current flows through the short circuit and that's why the Norton current is 10 ampere. And uh, to compute the Norton resistance we see that there is a dependent source so we'll follow the exact same procedure that we did to determine the dependent resistance that is we'll add a 1 volt voltage source or a 1 ampere cu current source here and then we determine the a voltage across the current source or the current through the voltage source and then we'll just take the ratio to obtain the Norton resistance and that will be 1 ohm. Now we're going to talk about the practical application of Thevenin resistance. So in many practical situations we often need to design a circuit to provide a power to a load. So there are applications in areas such as communication where it is desirable to maximize the power delivered to a load. How do we ensure that? So we now address the problem of delivering the maximum power to a load when given a system with known internal losses. So the Thevenin equivalent is useful to find the maximum power in a linear circuit and the maximum power that, can, that a linear circuit can deliver to a load. So let's say we ha have a large circuit, but we have been able to reduce it to its Thevenin equivalent, that is a voltage source VTH and the resistance in series RTH. And this is our load resistance. Let's say we can adjust our load resistance, so it's a variable resistor. It's also obvious from the symbol. So yeah, so the power delivered to the load is I square RL here. And I here is VTH divided by RTH plus RL. You can you can take a KVL or by Ohm's law you can uh, determine that. So P equals to I square RL becomes VTH by RTH plus RL square by RL. So we now need to determine what value of RL we need to set so that this power becomes maximum. 
In other words, we need to maximize the function here, this function here, VTH divided by RTH plus RL whole square times RL. We need to maximize this function where the independent variable is RL. So we're basically trying to ask what values of RL maximizes this function or power. So how do we determine that? So we'll talk about it in a minute, but let's just first talk about how the power varies with the load resistance. So for a given circuit, the VTH and RTH is fixed. So if we change the load resistance, the VTH and RTH does not change. So by varying the load resistance, the power delivered to the load varies as shown in this figure. So here the x-axis is the load resistance, the value of the load resistance, and y-axis is power. As we can see, for if RL is lower, the power is also lower. If RL is higher, the power is also lower. So there is a sweet spot right here through which uh, the power is very high and the power value reaches the maxima at, at a certain point. So when RL is equal to RTH, the power delivered becomes maximum. So the load's power becomes maximum when RL is equal to RTH. So we're going to try to derive this mathematically. So let's go back to the equation that we we're discussing. So this is the equation of the power of the load. So how do we perform maximization. So we differentiate this with respect to time and set the expression equals to zero and then if we do some algebraic manipulation we end up with RL minus RTH equals to zero. What this means that when the load resistance is equal is equal to the Thevenin resistance the power delivered to the load is maximum. We need to keep that in mind. The power we're talking about here this is the power of the load, not the power of the Thevenin resistance or the voltage source. This is the power of the load. So when RL is equal to the Thevenin resistance of the rest of the network, the power delivered to the load is maximum. So we can confirm, now this is a maxima, so excuse me, so this is basically uh, an extrema. So we don't really know whether it's ma mix minima or maxima. We can confirm by taking the second derivative of the power equation now with respect to RL and we'll see that this is uh, basically the maxima because the second derivative will be negative. So if we put RL is equals to RTH in the equation we end up with this equation, the equation of the maximum power the maximum power p max is equal to VTA squared by 4 RTH. This is the maximum power you can deliver to a load. So the summary of maximum power transfer theorem is if we set the value of the load resistance equal to the Thevenin resistance of the rest of the network, the power delivered to the load becomes maximum. If we set it higher or lower than RTH, then the power will be lower than the maximum value. And the maximum power is equal to VTA squared by 4 RTH. Okay, we'll now solve the problem to consolidate our understanding. So please solve this problem and then we'll match our answers. So please pause this video. So hopefully you've been able to solve this. It is clear from this equation you need to determine the Thevenin equivalent to apply the maximum power transfer theorem because you need VTH and RTH because Pmax is equal to VTH squared by 4 RTH. So it needs to take this load off and determine the open circuit voltage that will be the VTH and then you need to look into this terminal A and B with the load resistance removed and replace the voltage sources with short circuit and replace the current sources with open circuit and then find the equivalent resistance 
and that equivalent resistance will be your 7 resistance RTH here. And then we just take VTS squared by 4 RTH to determine the maximum power. Again, this all requires, and this is all based on your knowledge of Steven and equivalent circuits. So if you haven't watched that video, please go back and watch it. And uh, let me know if you have any uh, question in the comment section. So thank you for your time.